Is this going to work? Let's have a look. You might topple over. You might have noticed that we're coming to you from a different location than usual. Over the past few months of this uh, lockdown quarantine period, it has come to my attention that <laughs> I need a better place to sew. And so my family very kindly agreed to convert our garage into a workroom space for me. So that's where we are now. This used to be our garage. It is now kind of a hybrid utility room, storage room, and workspace for me. It's not quite finished yet. There's still some things that need to happen. I need to move all the stuff in here, for example. So September's gonna kind of be a bit of a strange month for me. I've got a lot of projects I need to work on, but I'm also kind of on a schedule, on a deadline for various different reasons. Firstly, my brother is getting married and I'm making a dress for me to wear to the wedding. So that needs to definitely be done. I need to sort this room out. I've got various other projects that need a deadline. I'm also house sitting for my brother when he's on his honeymoon. So Sergeant Tibbs and Winnie will be making a reappearance on this channel. Um, I look forward to spending some quality time with them. So that means I'm basically gonna lose a week of sewing time. Essentially, I'm a bit stressed out. I'm a bit stressed out. I've got a lot to do not much time to do it in, and so I don't really have time to film the type of videos that I usually like to make, um, you know, the more in-depth, nice camera angles, tutorial style videos. So I'm trying my hand at vlogging. <laughs> As you can see, I've really dressed up for the occasion. My hair is still wet from my shower this morning. I don't have any makeup on. I'm wearing a blanket. So this kind of is gonna set the general tone of these kind of vlogs I'm thinking of doing. I'm really leaning into the whole relaxed feel of it, but I don't want to deprive you of content completely, so this is a compromise. Should we talk about some stuff that I'm sewing? What am I working on? First of all, I did buy a dress for my brother's wedding all the way back in January. And it's a 1950s original vintage dress. It's an olive green, golden brocade. It's really beautiful. Maybe I'll find, take a picture of it and put it on the screen. However, I bought that dress for a wedding that was supposed to happen in June, which has been postponed, like a lot of things. It's just not the end of the world, but it just doesn't feel right to wear that dress which I had all this sort of expectation around and you know I thought it was going to be for a completely different day to the wedding that I'm actually going to where I have to wear a mask through the ceremony there's only going to be 30 people none of my extended family are going to be there and it just I don't know I put the dress on I was planning the rest of my outfit and I thought I just don't want to wear this dress anymore it just doesn't feel right I don't feel like I suppose it's just not sparking joy to borrow a phrase. So I decided to make a dress instead in about three weeks. Now I originally was going to wear this dress which is another original 1950s dress. However this is a very standard 34-26 type of vintage size and I am not a 34-26 anymore. I probably bought this like three years ago, four years ago, something like that. So as much as I love this dress, I don't really fit it anymore. I don't want to wear this specific dress. So I thought what I would do is I would copy it and make a sort of different version that fits me better, a new dress that's specifically going to be associated with this wedding. It's going to be a happy day, all that sort of thing. The pattern I am using is this. Now I think I got this pattern free. I believe so. It's New Look K6262 and it's a very simple dress with a gathered skirt. I'm making view B here. One of the reasons I wanted to make this pattern was because I've actually made this dress before. It was my 1950s Christmas dress if you've seen back on my blog or on my Instagram and this pattern actually fits me really well out of the envelope. I have to size down because of the ease, but it's, you know, it's fine. It's just a touch long in the torso, but it's good across the shoulders and the back and the waist to bust ratio and all that is really good for me. So I thought I'll just make up this pattern. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a lot of the elements that I love of this dress, which are the fuller pleated skirt and this, this, sort of <gasps> this sash bow thing is so flattering and really beautiful and really gives it that vintage touch so i wanted to replicate all those features on this dress so as you can see this dress very simple boat neck this is just pinned in place two darts it's going to have a center back opening a little short sleeve and i've kind of got the sash 
it's a work in progress here but I haven't trimmed it to the right length yet I haven't tied it in place yet because I want to do that on me as opposed to on the stand because this stand is a little bit smaller than me I knew I wanted to make it in red because red's one of my, a color that suits me very well I have a lot of other red dresses that I really love to wear they really make me feel um, beautiful I guess I really feel like it suits me whenever I wear red I feel like yeah I look great I feel confident and happy in myself so I knew I wanted it to be red and because of this 50 style I knew that I wanted something with a bit of body and so I bought this this is a polyester taffeta now it wasn't a cheap poly taffeta it was about I think it was 6.99 a meter it's from Midland Textile so I'll put a link if you're interested if you're in the UK it's a perfect shade of red it's been handling really nicely it's not too bad it frays like nobody's business but it's got really nice body I realize it's polyester I don't usually make anything in synthetic fibers However, working with silk for this, paying for silk for this dress, the fabric for this dress cost me 20 quid. If I'd bought real silk taffeta, that probably would have cost me 120 quid. Uh, that's why I went for the polyester. Particularly, you know, when it's a dress that I'm probably only gonna wear this dress for the one day of the wedding and then never wear it again, or maybe like wear it once again, I really can't justify spending that amount of money on something that I'm not going to get my 30 wears out of. So polyester it was. Now, because this fabric had such incredible body, what I originally did, I originally just made the skirt two widths of the material wide, so that was a three meter circumference to the skirt, and pleated it down with one and a half centimeter knife pleats into the waist, and it looked terrible. I put it on, I looked like a cupcake, I looked like one of those ladies that you put over toilet rolls, a toilet roll cover. It didn't give that sort of 1950s vibe that I wanted. It felt a lot more like 80s puffball, which is not what I was going for at all. So yesterday evening, I did all the work that I'd done all of yesterday. And I looked at some original vintage patterns in my collection from the 50s for skirts and some things online. And so I've since decided to change the look to these large inverted box pleats. So I'll have this flat front, which really helps fight the uh, cupcake effect and then box pleats at the darts at front and back and the side seam and that sort of helps it just helps the excess to lie a bit nicer and you kind of get that instead of that very bell shape that you, I was getting with the knife pleats I'm getting a much more a-line effect so I'm much happier with that that's the plan for today I'm going to work on this dress, get the set the pleats in so that I'm happy with them, hopefully get the skirt and the bodice attached. If I've got time, I will start because I am putting an invisible zip in this dress. If you've watched my most recent video about the 1940s sundress I made, you will know how I hate invisible zips and why I hate them. Um, because they're absolutely useless, they're pointless. I mean, I literally have no idea. They, they really anger me. However, in this type of dress, firstly, like I said, I'm not gonna wear it a lot. It's not gonna get a lot of use. It's only gonna, it's gonna be an occasion dress. I'm probably gonna wear it two or three times in its lifetime. So it's not gonna have a huge amount of strain on this zip. I'm not gonna be taking it on and off a lot. It's not like in something like a jumpsuit, you know, where you have to always undo the zip to go to the bathroom. So it's not gonna get a, a lot of heavy use. I'm wildly trying to justify this, aren't I? Essentially, I'm using inv another invisible zip because I think it's gonna look best on this dress. <sighs> Go on with the invisible zip. This is kind of a quick and dirty project as much as it's gonna be like quite an important dress. I haven't made a 12, for example, because I was pretty confident this pattern was gonna fit me, but I have run into a few issues with the skirt because I'm winging it a little bit, but this is kind of the way I like to work. This is often the way we work in the theater when we don't have an absolute design or we have more of a concept you know we start and make it up as we go along and put things on the stand and try them and if they work they work and if they don't they don't we change it so that's kind of how I've been working with this project I think now with the pleats I've got a plan I'm happy with what I'm gonna do so I suppose really I should stop talking and start sewing let's get to it you can see i've got my trusty pouch here of all my kit i'm not tying this to me because i'll be honest with you at the moment it's got a lot of stuff in it's very heavy i need to clear this out once i've organized the rest of my storage in here but let's have a look at this bodice so what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to pleat this up together i think is what i'm going to do i'm going to use my extra fine pins which have been a bit of a game changer for me in terms of hand strength i've got my thimble on for pinning as well and I'm just going to pin both ends. But I think I did about three attempts of different pleating arrangements yesterday, all of which didn't work, which can be very frustrating. But I don't know, I like experimenting. So 
I'm, it's all kind of part of the process in my opinion, so I just work with it. I'm also going to pin in the side seams because I want those to line up because that will be very pleasing aesthetically. So now essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of freeform pleat this. I'll probably start with a nice five centimeter wide pleat, see how it goes, see how it looks, pin it in place, pleat the rest of it. And um, yeah, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'll change it. So I'm going to do that and I'll get back to you when I'm done. So I've box pleated, I've put the box pleats in now and I've tried to make them line up with the darts and the side seams. However, I've got this bit of excess between each pleat. It's quite a lot, so I'm torn because I don't really want to make my pleats any bigger because they are touching as it is. And I could make one side bigger, this side, and at the center front I could make it bigger as well, but then my pleats would be off lopsided, the balance might be off. The question is, should I put another mini pleat in here like this? And I have seen a couple of vintage patterns where they do this and they've got like a sort of almost a dart actually and then it releases a bit like that. Or my other option is I can smooth out the excess, oh look, pin's still hanging out there, and shape the side seam because at the minute this is just rectangular panels so I can, can put a little bit of hip shaping, a bit of a flare in the skirt panel instead. What I might do is pin in a little tuck here, see what that looks like from the other side, see how I feel about it because if it looks rubbish I can just angle my side seam and if I like it I'll just leave it in place and stitch it in. Right, let's have a look now. I mean I don't hate it, I don't know how I'm gonna feel about it on the front though is all. Hmm. I don't really know what I want to do. Do you know what I think I'm gonna do this because I really can't be faffed with this taking out this, ripping out this side seam, I think this will just be easier. So yeah, let's do it. I'll pin those in and get back to you. Okay, we're back. What I've actually ended up doing, instead of trying to squeeze another pleat in between where the two pleats meet, what I've done is actually just make this a double pleat. So for some reason this one is lopsided, but this one is perfectly even over, this one over the side seam is perfectly even and this one's lopsided. Maybe that's to do with my asymmetric body. Maybe I cut it wonky. To be honest, I don't really care. It creates a nice sort of sideways poof, which I like, kind of emphasizing that A-line thing again. It's gonna be quite thick at the side here, but I'm not too worried about that. It should be fine. I'm gonna tack these in place and then sew them with the sewing machine to the bodice. Actually, I'm gonna tack it and then I'm gonna try it on to check that I'm happy with it. And then I'm gonna sew them in place. Okay, I, can, I hope you can hear me because I've left my lavelio like all the way over there. But this is, it's coming together. It's only very poorly pinned at the back. Obviously I've still got my jeans on underneath. I haven't pressed this because I haven't actually stitched it yet. It's just tacked. But I think you can see what I'm going for. We're getting there. This is definitely more 50s swing dress than toilet roll cover now, which I'm very happy with. This needs setting in place still, obviously, but it's it's doing the thing that I like about that dress, this dress. So yeah, I think I'm gonna stitch this in place, press this seam, press these pleats in maybe a little bit, just at the very top. You can see here the double pleats at the side. I quite like what they're doing, obviously because they're not even. <laughs> Oops. It's a bit idiosyncratic, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> But I'm happy with it. I think it's going to look great. This neckline is obviously going to be uh, one and a half centimeters lower down. It's all coming together. Just imagine this. This is why I love taffeta. <sighs> I'm out of breath. <laughs> Too much. Okay. I'm happy with what we've got. The two are now attached. It needs a press. I don't know if you remember, if you watched my 1950s dress video, once I stitched the pleats in the waistband, I then did a reinforcing line of stitching to stop the waistline stretching out. And I've noticed that on this vintage dress, the one that I'm copying, it also has that. It's got this line of machine top stitching around the waistline as well. And that's reinforcing the pleats so that they don't stretch out. So we need to press this and then I want to top stitch it and then I'm going to put the zip in and then it's facings and hems and then it's oh and this I need to figure this out. 
So she's nearly there, so she's nearly there. I don't know how far I'm gonna get on this this evening because I'm very quickly tiring out. I'm gonna press this, I'm gonna stitch it in place, see if I can get onto the zip. Maybe I'll just tack it shut, ready, to put the zip in, and I'll check in before I stop sewing for this evening. And yeah, I think that's it. I think I'm done for this evening. What I've done is I've pressed, I've now pressed this seam allowance up and I've top stitched it in place. This was actually a real pain to press, I'm not gonna lie, to keep these pleats, you know, you can see I've pressed them in more than I would like on the wrong side, but I did go back and redo the right side, but can't be bothered to turn it inside out to show you, so. I've tacked, closed the center back now, all the way down, ready for tomorrow morning to start putting in the invisible zip. That being said, of course, now that that's tacked shut, it doesn't fit on the mannequin, I can't get it on. So it's just gonna hang here, I think, this evening, and I'm gonna enjoy my cup of tea and have a rest. I'm really pleased with the way it's coming together now, the shape, you can see it just hanging here, is much better, much less like, so once the zip's in, I've got to do the facing, I've got to do the hems on the sleeves and the skirt, and then figure out the sash. But then we've got a dress. So I might finish tomorrow, I might finish the day after, depending on how much energy I have and things like that, how much time I have free. But once it's done, I think what I'm gonna do is try on the whole outfit, do my hair, get my hat, wear my stockings, put my shoes on to check. I'm definitely happy with this final look because you know there's still time to buy something <laughs> if I'm not. I'll see you tomorrow for my least favorite kind of fastening. Welcome back. So the order of the day is first of all invisible zip and then facing and then hems and then hopefully we'll get around to sorting out the sash as well. I'm not sure how I want to hem this yet. I need to do a test and see how the fabric holds up but that's the plan so let's get started. So now the zip is tacked in place, what I'm going to do is cut it right side out to start with. And I'm going to undo this machine basting. Let's see if we get lucky. I was hoping that I'd be able to pull one of these threads and it would all come out in one go, but that hasn't happened. Okay, so now that seam is open, I'm going to undo the zip and then stitch it. Of course, I need my zipper foot. It's a bit of a mess in here. Can you tell? That one up? Yeah. I'm just going to check. Yep, that's all nice and flat. Hmm. Do I want to try and squeeze that through there for the sake of smoothing it in the same direction? In case you're wondering why I am trying to squeeze the rest of the dress through this gap as opposed to having it here and sewing from the other end, it's because the feed dog smooths the fabric and you can end up, that's how you end up with your seams not matching and you sew in opposite directions because the creep of the sewing machine has eased them out of sync. So. That's why I'm struggling like this for the sake of probably a few millimeters of precision. <laughs> but that's the kind of person I am. And do you know what I mean? It's not really that difficult. <laughs> it just means the dress gets a bit crumpled, but I'm gonna have to iron it anyway, so. <laughs> okay, moment of truth, here we go. <laughs> Guys, how much am I bothered about that? Matches up at the top, all right. It looks pretty good. How much do I care about two millimeters? Enough to unpick a zip and re-sew it? Oh, it's gonna really annoy me though. I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave it. Nobody's gonna notice. Nobody's gonna be looking at my back, okay? No one's gonna be looking at my back. It's not my wedding. So now I'm just sewing up the rest of the center back seam below the zip. Decided, I'm just carrying on. I'm not that bothered about the zip fact. My zip's out by two mil at the waist. It's probably more to do with the way I joined the skirts to the waist anyway than the alignment of the zip. The zip looks pretty happy, so I'll just have to live with it. 
Neck facing, it's pinned in place, ready to go. It's all starting to come together. So, zip is in, I'm quite happy with it. Moving on with my life, you know, can't be dealing with that anymore. Facing's on, understitched, and it's pinned in place at the moment. I need to hand sew it down at the shoulder seams and at the uh, at the centre back as well. So next challenge is the hems. I need to do a sample. I need to do some samples and see which hem finish is going to look best because this taffeta is going to pull and show really badly. So sleeves, skirt hem. I need to decide on the length as well. I kind of want to go shorter than vintage length because I want this dress to sort of be modern, I suppose. I don't want it to look too out of place on the photos, you know. I think I want it to be vintage inspired as opposed to original vintage. For goodness sake, it's in polyester, so. <laughs> and it's got an invisible zip down the centre back, so it's not historically accurate in any by any means. So I think a slightly shorter length will just help bring it up to the 21st century. So this underbust bow section and then it's just pinned in place and I want to pleat it down and set some pleats in so that it lies a bit nicer than just being bunched up. I want it to look a bit more considered. I want it to look a bit more considered than just tied in a knot. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. We're getting there. I'm going to take this off, figure out my hems, figure out what I'm doing with this. Obviously these ends need finishing. Oh, of course then, I'm not done though because I have to make a matching mask. So we're nearly there. Zips in, facings on, bows set in place, sleeves have a hem. This looks a little bit wonky, but it's straight on me. I have scoliosis, so nothing's ever central. But I'm happy with this when it where it sits on me. I've deliberately made this asymmetrical, so it's a bit sort of uh, jaunty. Also, so it just looks a bit more naturalistic, I think. The only thing left to do now is the hem. I think I want this this dress to be the same length as this dress because I really like where this dress hits on me and it's not too long. It's a bit on that shorter side like I was talking about earlier. I made a sample of various different types of hem so that I could decide what was going to be the best hem finish for this fabric and this dress and what I've done on the sleeves is I've just I've just turned the overlocked edge up just barely and then done a blind hem stitch on the machine. Uh, I did that because I really liked the length of the sleeves as was, so I didn't want to lose any more length than was absolutely necessary. And I seem to remember from when I made my Christmas dress that actually I just zigzagged the sleeve hems up for that dress because I like them longer as well, so I think I need to make a note on the pattern to make the sleeves longer. Uh, so I blind hem stitched them on the machine because I made the sample and I, you know, did hand sewing, machine sewing, turning under, just overlooked edge, and actually the difference between the hand sewn slip stitch and the machine sewn blind hem stitch uh, was so negligible, I really don't think there's going to be any visual benefit to doing it by hand. And at this point, I just want this dress done. I don't think it's going to be worth the time and the energy to hand sew three meters of hem less than that. It's like two and a half meters of hem, but still. I'm just gonna level it, then overlock all the way around and blind hem it on the machine. However, it's four o'clock. It's the worst time of day for me. My brain is quickly turning to mush. So I'm going to leave this where it is for now and then come back to it later this evening when hopefully I've had a rest, so I'll feel a bit better and I'll have had something to eat and will be feeling a bit brighter. So yeah, it's getting there. I'm really pleased with how it's looking. I'll show you the back. So I really love the lines of it now. I'm really pleased with it. I've also tried it on and I'm really pleased with where everything's sitting, how everything's fitting. So we're so, so close, so, so close. The only thing then of course is that I have to make the mask to match, but that doesn't take very long. So I'm not worrying about that today. I don't know if I'll even do that tomorrow. I might leave that to the day after, but yeah, I'm off to have a break. I'll probably have a cup of tea and a biscuit and I'll uh, see you later this evening. In a turn of events that's going to shock literally no one, I didn't get the hem finished yesterday evening. I was too tired. I had to go to bed. 
Uh, however, it is pinned to be level now, so I'm going to finish that up, overlock it, blind hem it on the machine, and then I've got my face mask pattern to make my mask, and then hopefully we should be done. So let's get to it. It's finished. I'm so, so pleased with the final result. It's really everything I wanted it to be. It's come to my attention that I've, what I've essentially done is recreated a pattern that I've seen online without realizing it. There's this, one of those Butterick repro patterns. This one's from, the one I'm thinking of is from the, um, the early 60s. I'll put a photo or somewhere. And uh, yeah, so I kind of subconsciously, obviously looked at that pattern and was like, oh, I like that. And then made that happen. Um, at least I didn't have to buy a new pattern. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm really happy with the result. I feel really cute. I don't feel too formal because it's going to be a bit more of a relaxed event. Don't feel too like Kate Middleton-y as well. You know, that sort of Ted Baker look. Oh, it's not really my thing. So I'm really pleased with this. All I want to do now is make a mask and then I'll put on the whole ensemble for you and you can see the completed look. I'm not going to do my hair though because I can't be bothered with that. So, see you in a bit. And here we are. I've made a mask. The finished look. Can you see my shoes? They match the bag. <laughs> it's done. Do you know, I'm really pleased with this. To say that the fabric for this dress cost me 20 quid, I used a pattern I already owned. Kind of copied a dress that I liked. This came from a charity shop. The shoes and the bag all came off eBay. So I reckon, I think I haven't, like the entire outfit has cost me less than 50 quid, which is not bad going at all for a wedding outfit. So second hand shoes, second hand hat, second hand bag, DIY polyester dress. So not that sustainable, but no fast fashion. So I think overall I've done pretty well and less than 50 quid. So I think that's going to be it for this vlog. This being done is such a weight off my mind, I must confess. It's great to have it finished and now I'm ready to go for the wedding. And now I can start on some of the other projects that are uh, lined up, that have got deadlines and things. I also am going to uh, actually properly move into this room. Obviously the doors still need to go on. But I went to get some storage boxes this morning, you might have noticed, so I can start organising everything and I will take you with me on that journey. And then after that, I'm going to start doing some slightly different types of videos. I must confess, I am a little bit bored of making 1940s and 50s dresses from original patterns. I mean, it was great fun to do for me during lockdown because those were the supplies I had on hand, those are the projects that I want, wanted to do for quite a while. Um, but now, going forward, I, I'm going to make some different sorts of things, I think. I did start this channel with the intention of making more historical costumes. If you don't know, I'm a Victorianist. I studied Victorian studies, and that's one of my area of dress history specialism. And we haven't done anything Victorian yet on this channel, so I'm having to, to change that. I've also got some more, um, well, I've got one more vintage project, but it's gonna be slightly earlier, and a bit different coming up. And then I'm taking part in Kira Lee Cosplay, has challenged us all to make a Halloween costume this year, inspired by these vintage uh, Weldon's Halloween catalogs and various other Halloween fancy dress costume catalogues. So I'm making <laughs> a very silly costume, which I'm really excited about. It's going to be a complete change from what I usually do. Well, not from what I usually do, what I usually do on this channel. And yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. So Halloween content is coming your way at some point in the next couple of months. So I guess that's really all I've got to say about this project. I will, of course, uh, be sharing some pictures from the big day, probably over on my Instagram. So make sure you're following me over there if you aren't already. And um, yeah, I really look forward to making something that isn't a vintage dress on this channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.